Hello and welcome to another tutorial video by Ian David Marsden, and that's me, Ian David Marsden. You can see uh, more of my artwork on my website at marsdenillustration.com, and I'm also on Facebook. If you look for Ian David Marsden, you'll find me, and if you like my page, that would make me extremely happy, of course. This is a tutorial video where I'm drawing a Halloween witch. She's standing next to a jack-o'-lantern Halloween pumpkin and a werewolf. There is there are two other videos that show how I'm inking the jack-o'-lantern and the werewolf. And there is also a video that shows how I drew the background sketch that you see me working with. Here I'm working in Adobe Illustrator and all the line art that you see is 100% vector. The reason that you see uh, brush dynamics and uh, thicker and thinner lines and a certain weight to the lines is because I'm using brushes that I've modified in the settings to take into account the stylus that I'm using on my Wacom Cintiq tablet or screen that I'm working with. Uh, together these tools work incredibly efficiently. The video you're watching is sped up two times so it's twice as fast as I worked. Um, this is a personal project. It's basically a drawing for uh, a cover for my Facebook so I do not have time to spend all day working on this so I'm probably working a little faster than I would on a uh, you know cover illustration for the New York Times where everything really has to be super perfect however um, sometimes uh, drawing freely and loosely and relatively quickly actually gives you a nicer result because it just looks natural and uh, yeah because I already have a sketch that's relatively worked out, um, I, I already know where things are going to go. But as you can see, sometimes I improvise and add stuff uh, as I feel like, especially here. This is my project, my idea. I know in my head what I want it to look like, and I can change at any given second how I want it to look in my head and change it. This is supposed to be fun after all, and it is. So here I had my lines, um, my sort of main lines, and what I did is I flattened them. I saved them first as a symbol, so I have them in the library, and I can still edit them if I want to. Then I flatten them, and then I make them a live paint object, and then I expand the live paint object. Now when you do that, it kind of has the same effect as if you used a path, uh, a shape, outline tool and um, as you can see little overlapping bits now turned into separate objects and I can just select them and delete them very cleanly it's a little trick uh, I find it saves time allows you to work very cleanly you have to of course in your mind kind of know what is overlapping and what isn't overlapping and um, but there you there you go so now I have my rough lines and I'm going more into the details I'm using a smaller brush. You can see I went down to round two in my brush palette. R round three for the eyebrows. I made these brushes so I kind of know what they do and uh, you can change all of the different dynamics in your brush editor. And I work with these tools every day so obviously you know I know which one to grab for what purpose and if I find that I don't have one that does what I want it to do then I'll create one and I'll save it and I will also make sure that I save that brush library in case anything ever goes wrong or I crash a hard drive or lose something or there's a power failure or whatever the uh, settings get lost then I always have a backup of my personal brushes as well Um, there I actually used the 
circle tool to grade her pupils because I find that, uh, especially with a sort of staring hypnotic vampire's gaze, it makes a difference whether the pupils are perfectly round or not. That's my personal preference. I'm adding a little highlight with the pen tool with a white fill and a black stroke, one point. There I'm correcting some of the lines using the Bezier handles. Uh, this is the really cool thing about this. They look like ink strokes or brush strokes, but they're 100% vector. So they all have nodes and uh, can be moved and changed and shifted using the uh, point select tool. These are things you have to simply experiment with and don't be scared. If you're brand new to vector art or illustrator, then this is all gonna seem really strange. Um, or if you've been working in bitmaps for years or even started out like I did with real pen and ink and paper, where of course there is no undo and there are no busy handles, then in the beginning it seems really weird and you're like, why is there why is there a line here and why is there a handle here and why is it pulling my line away and I didn't want it to do that and uh, you just have to you know relax remember you can always undo Adobe Illustrator gives you lots of undos and you can set that in the settings too and just have fun you know don't be scared it's your piece uh, and after a while you become more comfortable I guess it's like using a different instrument or maybe changing from a regular guitar to an electric guitar I don't know I'm a I'm a keyboard man myself but uh, I like pianos and I like synthesizers and I like pen and paper and I absolutely adore my digital tools my Adobe tools and of course my Wacom tablets and my Cintiq um, I really wouldn't know what to do without them. And uh, luckily I don't have to. So here now I'm just making some little changes, uh, little tweaks. Um, I mean, you can go as nuts as you want, of course. Like I said, I didn't want to spend all day on this. And it will basically only be seen for a few days on Halloween and on my Facebook. So I'm just going to give it a, you know, quick clean. Here I'm now using the pen tool to just close some of the gaps there on the, the uh, laces. And then the next step. I'm going to also use the pen tool filled with black and I'm going to start filling in details such as her uh, eyelashes and shading. This is a technique that I use. Uh, personally, I like it. Um, again, I already know in my mind what I want to shade and I kind of know what it would look like if I was doing it with a brush. So I can visualize it in my mind and I simply draw the outlines of it with the pen and it fills in with a lovely black, you know, flat black. This saves a lot of time. It's incredibly clean. I think it looks good. And again, because this is vector art, I mean, I could scale this to any size at all. There are no pixels in this whatsoever. I might decide uh, for some projects to take this illustrator art and then import it into Photoshop and then in Photoshop work with gradients and airbrushes and you know very very soft lighting effects and things like that that uh, a lot of that can be achieved in Illustrator as well but I don't really like working with gradient meshes and all those complicated uh, well not complicated but they're not as intuitive I find of course if it needs to be vector art I can do it but but even then, even if I'm working in Photoshop, I would most likely bring in my line art from Illustrator. In Photoshop, I can save it um, as a smart object, which means it stays a vector file. And I can scale it up and down. 
And if you double click your smart object in Illustrator and Photoshop, of course, it then opens up an Illustrator file and you could actually change and edit the vector art again in Illustrator. It's quite very well uh, thought out how it works now. There were a few years where all of these things did not work smoothly together, but luckily that's quite a long time ago. And now they all play very nicely, mostly because uh, many of the programs are Adobe. This artwork, by the way, could also be imported into Flash, because Flash, which is also Adobe now, um, imports um, Illustrator symbols and even imports Illustrator layers, two layers in Flash. This is for you wild and crazy people out there like me who still use Flash. <laughs> right, so as you can see, I'm drawing some more flat shading here. This is going to take a, a little while. And um, if I were now to color this in Illustrator, I would have my black line art on one layer and then I would start laying down flat colors below it and then uh, I would create another layer above the flat colors for detailed colors and highlights and all those kind of things so I would have a multi-layered sandwich where I always know what I'm working on for this video and this tutorial I'm only doing the line art I'm not showing the coloring so there you have it. Thanks for watching.